is possibly going to get traded in the near future. And I think that's Kevin Durant. I think Kevin Durant is is right there in this in this trade situation, uh, sweepstakes. Um, before we talk about like where he might go, what we think would be a good fit, who could put a good package together, let me ask you this: What do you think is the percentage, the likelihood that KD gets traded in the next year? Uh, four on. I'm gonna go. Him get traded, I'd probably say I'll go 40%. 40%. That's a, that's a, I like that guess because it's you're right there in the in the reasonable it's getting hot. It's starting to get hot. It's starting to get hot. I, I would be I, I'm gonna do the same thing as you, but on the opposite side of certainty of or of where I think it's gonna go. I'm gonna say 60%. I think he gets traded. I'm still there's still a lot of doubt that I I who knows? It could still not happen, but I just I lean towards the fact that the Nets are gonna decide like, hey, we need to just get stuff back and start setting the course yeah. for our future rather than trying to you know glue together a broken vase, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say sixty. You say forty. So we're we're right there. Um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah. um, who do you th- who who do you think would be a good fit, or do you think? Uh, do you think that there's like a team that would like go above and beyond in terms of putting a package together? I could see like I think it was Brad. Was it Brad or you talking about the Toronto Raptors? Somebody I think was th- that was Brad. I think Raptors would be a good shout. I honestly yeah. think the Miami Heat. Like you just just go play yeah. in South Beach and you're still in the East. Imagine him with Solstice as his coach. Yeah. Solid. Give me buckets. Yeah, man, I actually I like that a lot too. I think Miami would be really fun, and it's that to me would be one of the best fits for him as far as you take you take the uh, the culture building leadership aspect of basketball completely out of his hands. Like, hey, we have it here. The culture we have Heat culture. We have it. We don't need KD culture. Like, let's just let's just be that. And I think the same thing could be said about Memphis too. I actually don't like. I don't like. I know that trade has been out there for a, a, all summer, and people talk about it a lot. I, that's a bad example of fitting the timeline. <laughs> like it would be good in terms of you are going to compete in the next couple years, but you do maybe sell your future a little short as far as how long that run could go. What well, What about the Lakers, Bernie? You think the Lakers have any chance? Because there's a lot of people talking about it. I think there's zero chance that they do it unless AD is in the in the deal somehow. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, of course. At this I'm, point, I was, yeah. I was on mute. Um, I was on mute that whole time, but yeah, I don't think. Uh, I don't think Katie. Is uh, yeah, yeah, Sean, I, I saw it. Um, he, he's back, he's back, but yeah, I, I don't think at this point that Kevin Durant is, you know, they're not going to give up a farm for him. That there's going to be one of those situations where you know, we saw it in the summer, no one wanted to give him a back, no one wanted to do anything for him, and so I, I think for me, like, I, I just can't see it, I can't see them trying to uh, give up a ton to get KD. See, I I do think somebody, I think somebody could easily find themselves in the position where it's like, hey, what are, what are we even waiting for? Like, this is Kevin Durant, right? Like, he is desperate to get out of here. Um, I mean, that'll that's kind of a stupid, obvious thing to say, but that's going to be the difference between if any traction starts happening or not. Like, how how much does any one team want him, right? And I'll tell you, there's a few teams in the league. That are positioning themselves in like the thirst sweepstakes for any uh, next superstar. Like there's a couple teams, and you know you're looking at the logo of one of them. Like the Knicks are, they're straight up desperate. Like they are desperate to get off of some of these contracts and to capitalize on all the assets they have. And I and it's not even to talk, to be a homer and just talk about the Knicks because I do think they're important in terms of the uh, you know the dominoes of this NBA season. 
like they have a ton of assets, a ton of desirable yeah. contracts in their young guys and more so than anything else. And I think that this is something that's going to going under talked about in mainstream media since they, they I guess you could say they flopped on the Donovan Mitchell thing. Now it looks like a flop, but I, I stand by how I felt then. Like, don't, don't go get him. He didn't play defense in Utah. He's playing it now, but regardless. The, the difference is you have the one of the biggest cities in the world, if not the biggest city in the world, New York City, and you have a bunch of guys in that front office that are going to get fired this offseason if they yeah. don't do anything. So that is a huge they could trade plus you know youthful guys so if if let's say kd put his request back out on the block and said hey i do i do still want to get out of here that's a team that might might go for it right and i yeah. the warriors man i mean think about the warriors we were talking about them in our chat too like they're a team that if it keeps going poorly they have a ton of assets to go make a trade and they already bob myers already said hey i wouldn't mind i wouldn't what mind KD coming back so uh He's he's definitely a guy to consider. I think he's the hardest one to talk about just because we saw how poorly it went when he put the trade request in in the first place. Like no yeah. traction was made anywhere. There wasn't even really good rumors out there of people having discussions, which I think is a clear sign that there just wasn't anything to even report that was going on. So um, I, I would still look out for Phoenix too. I think Phoenix is, why wouldn't they call back, you know? Why yeah. wouldn't they? Especially if Mikael Bridges keeps playing the way he is, he could be a huge piece in sending back like Mikael Bridges and Aiton and a bunch of picks. That's not a bad return. Not great, but not KD, yeah. but it's a good return. Uh, let's move on to the next play. We're now. I got two or three more that I want to talk about real yeah, quick. All see. right. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Um, big one for me. And we, we can discuss whether or not this actually matters that much for this team, if it changes anything, what they could get, if it would change it. But we got to talk about Minnesota, Bernie. we got to talk about them. We, Minnesota. Have I, I have never fallen subject to the heat of the moment, old... I love this team more than I did with this Minnesota Timberwolves team. And, and please don't do this, folks, in the chat. But if you wanted to, you could go back and look at the our stream when the Rudy Gobert trade happened. Yeah. I was freaking out. I was like, I love it. I love all the chemistry, or not the chemistry, but the on-court chemistry, I guess, the fit more so than anything. And boy, was I wrong. But a lot of that has to do, I man, I would argue a lot of that has to do with Carl Anthony Towns. Um, he's been he's been good, but it's it's one of those things where is his version of good really helping that team succeed? And I mean, we have long debated again. We've debated Carl Anthony Towns as a player so many times. I I can't even count for many years too. Um, there's nobody on that team that is more likely to be traded than him. Anthony Edwards is not getting traded. Rudy Gobert can't be traded, and he isn't going to get traded because they would never get the return that they just sent for him, for him. Yeah. So they couldn't accept defeat on the Rudy Gobert. So it's Carl Anthony Towns. But they have way too much money tied up in that team not to do anything. So I almost am starting to believe that it's more of an inevitability than anything else. Like, it's going to happen at some point, in my opinion, that Carl Anthony Towns is going to get traded. Uh, my question to you, Bernie, is... Do you think there's anything they could do that would actually help them as far as trading Carl Anthony Towns? And where do you think he should go? <sighs> That's a tough one. Cause I think if like, if I really think about like what team could use Carl Anthony Towns at this point, um, <sighs> let me take a look at these teams really quick. I mean, it's just kind of like, I think like Atlanta is pretty interesting. Atlanta's pretty interesting but they're they're winning right now man i don't know if you'd ruin that chemistry i if i was if i was the hornets i'm looking to make any trade package that i don't know if they have anything but i'm looking to like get him to team up with Lamelo ball um you don't think they're so bad they should just stick on the when the or nothing situation i mean if they get nothing then it's uh 
Yeah, true. That's I mean, that's a fair, that's a super fair point for any of these teams. Are we actually going to end up with the guy that we're tanking for? Is it worth could we go get something that's guaranteed? I think that's a super fair point. Or if I'm the Chicago Bulls, could I look to trade and get get Anthony Towns I, and team up with Levine and Caruso well, and, we were, and all them and DeRozan? Boiler, we're going to talk about Anthony Davis in a minute too. I want to I want to go back to Anthony Davis and introduce him to the segment, but. Carl Anthony Towns is in the same same situation with Chicago being a pretty good fit. Like Vucevic has been not that guy. You know, that trade, yeah. we've talked about it a few times too. That is one of the worst Corey trades Blake. in recent memory. Yeah, that's that's god awful that trade. Um I just man, Carl Anthony Towns would he would fit that team pretty well, but then they have no interior defense. Like they have so little as far as, you know, any sure rim protection and what about, you know, what about your it. Knicks your Knicks could use them yeah <laughs> that's that, that, so this is where I'm going to be the saddest I'm going to be on this whole stream because I do <laughs> think I just went on my little Knicks tirade about they are the biggest domino moving piece of the NBA season right now as far as a team that could be introduced into any of these uh superstar yeah. trade sweepstakes they're uh -huh. they're the biggest piece I want it to be KD. I want it to be Shea Gilgis Alexander. But the problem is, is that I feel like the Carl Anthony Towns situation is creeping up much faster than those ones are. And I also feel like the Anthony Davis one is creeping up a lot faster too. That being said, the Kentucky connection runs very sure. deep with with the New York Knicks for an <laughs> office, and Carl Anthony Towns is, I mean, he's right in the heart of that. He's a wildcat, uh, baby. Right in the heart of that. So it's it's pretty ugly as far as. My outlook, because I do think we're going to end up with either him or AD if we end up with anybody this season. Um, I just don't know if it helps, man. I'm not a big cat guy, man. I really have never been. You have to put him in a really good situation, I think, for it to truly work. One thing for the Knicks that works really well is just he does provide exactly what they're the worst at, which is three-point shooting. Like, yeah. you've got you to gotta get some more three-point shooting. I actually am curious, like, I mean – what about Anthony Davis or Cat? What if they swapped? You know, is that a, a reality in any way, shape, or form? Because I, I'm not sure that doesn't benefit both of those teams. Carl Anthony Towns can shoot for the Lakers. He's not as great on defense, which they're also terrible on defense. The Lakers, but I don't know. Maybe maybe AD is a better fit with with Gobert and. I don't think he is either. I don't know, man. That one's really tough. But I, I do think Carl Anthony Towns <laughs> needs to get moved. I would look at Atlanta. I know that you think they're they're winning. Why mess it up? But I mean, imagine imagine Carl Anthony Towns slotting in for Capella, and then you know John Collins is fine. He's been playing really well this season so far, as far as John Collins is concerned, in my estimation of him. I still am not sure about him as like long term. That's your guy. But if you had Dejounte Murray, Trey, and Carl Anthony Towns, you're a very hard team to defend on offense. Um, and you have just incredible amounts of size and versatility again with that team. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's tough because I think the the Memphis or sorry, Memphis, the Minnesota Timberwolves issues I think stem from a lot of things, um, and I think. To blame it all on those two guys, I think would be a yeah would no, be a I, cop I, out. I, I I think Anthony Edwards does deserve some accountability as well in terms sure. of I think there's some playmaking stuff that he needs to work on as as a guard that he can easily like hit those guys on some some quick lobs. Yeah, um, but he's not that guy though. I mean, they don't even really have a point guard. That's probably one of their biggest problems is just not having anybody who can can play make and handle. Because here I'm looking at uh, Hoops Hype actually just put out their their top 100 trade value uh, piece 4.0 for the year. Uh, yeah, and they have they have Carl Anthony Towns as the number 20th highest ranked trade value. I mean, if you're if you're if you're uh, Minnesota, and there is actually people that believe he's that good as far as a trade asset, I I don't understand not getting something for him now. Because yeah. I, I, I think the writing is on the wall as far as your level of success with this is one of your best this guy is one of your best players. So yeah. Do you think he do you think he's the twentieth highest 
trade value in the league? Who? I mean, it's all it's all at Carl Anthony Towns. It's all abstract make believe, but like I think, He's, I don't know about. It. I don't know. I don't know if he has trade value right now. I don't know. To me, it... he does, but not like they have him. For example, he's number twenty. Here's the next three players. Are you ready? They have number twenty-one is Scotty Barnes. I think that's insanity. Scotty Barnes is way more valuable than Carl Anthony Towns in my estimation. Pascal Siakam has been better than Carl Anthony Towns for a year and a half straight at this point. Uh, Cade Cunningham is number twenty-three. I. All three of those dudes, in my opinion, are way yeah. more valuable than Carl I, Anthony I Towns. But if there's that. people who think Carl Anthony Towns is that valuable, pull a, pull a Rudy Gobert out yourself and go get some crazy value in return and, and yeah. reset the deck a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <clears throat> I agree. But, you know, right. it's kind of like the bed that you chose to sleep in, right? Like, they they have decided that this is kind of oh, yeah. where they're going right now with their roster. Um, so oh, yeah. we'll see, see what happens, man. It'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. All right. Let's quickly talk about two more Anthony Davis. Let's just, let's just bust through the Anthony Davis conversation. Anthony Davis. If, if they put him up, do you think they could get a return that's justifiable and even trading him one And where do you think he should go? Bernie? Oh, I mean, if he was to go anywhere, Oh, man, this is a tough one. I mean, I would look to see if any of those Warriors pieces would want to come to L.A. Bernie, Bernie, you are going right in the direction I want to go, <laughs> and I love it. The Warriors should be looking so hard at Anthony Davis. I, I actually love that trade for both teams. I love that trade. Because you could get younger with, you know, a couple pieces in return. Like, throw, throw Moody and Wiseman. Why not? You throw them in the trade and then get, yeah. I mean, get Clay or Draymond, whichever one you want more, because I bet yeah. you could get one of them. And then take a, take a couple picks, because all that together, people might say, like Warriors fans in particular might say, wow, that's a horrible trade. But you have to do that. I mean, the, the Clay or Draymond contract, whatever it is, is not that valuable. So throwing that in there with, you know, a couple young guys and a bunch of picks, that that's kind of a win for both teams because he's exactly what the Warriors need. A super defensive center, but he can actually shoot and give you a little bit more offense. And in that offense, like, he'd be better. I mean, he's not the same AD as he was, but with the Warrior spacing and ball movement, uh, they he'd be better. That's for certain. So I, lo- I love that trade for both teams. I think that would be so interesting to see him go there. Yeah. I think either there or he should go to maybe the place where where it all started. Go to New Orleans. Back to New Orleans. Back to New Orleans. See now, this is a weird one. I'm going to sound a little contradictory again to my my Kevin Durant Memphis thing, but I I, I don't think Memphis is terrible, especially with how often Jaron Jackson Jr. is hurt. I love Triple J. I love Triple J. I've been big on him since he came into the league. Mm-hmm. That being said, if they could have a consistent piece in that spot. It would be the one seed in the in the West, probably. Um, right now, that is. Yeah. So, I I think that would be interesting for them. I, I don't know if I would do that either, though, because it is it is similar enough to the KD. The timeline situation does not line up yeah. very well for that one. Um, let's move let's move on from AD. I do think he's a little bit boring, and you took my biggest idea, which is the Golden State one. I I love that. I love it. Um, the last one, Bernie. <clears throat> right, final one. Last one. And this one, hmm, this one is much more speculative than the other ones. We've talked about it in our, our, our text text chats a little bit, but let's talk about Joel Embiid. Let's just go three centers in a row to end Embiid. it off. Um, <clears throat> the Philly situation doesn't seem to be going super well. You know, Harden's out for a month. They have one of the worst coaches in the league, in my opinion. Sorry, cough, cough, Doc Rivers. <laughs> um He's not one of the worst coaches, but he's definitely not great for that team. That being said, I, I do think there's a situation in which Joel Embiid is in that running to be the next big superstar shock. I need to, I can't yeah. play with these guys anymore. So I, I'm not sure. I think with Maury, I think there is always a chance that a move happens, you know, just because it's Maury. He's going to do whatever you know, he beats to the beat of his own drum, so to speak. And I, I believe, isn't he, he's the GM and the president of basketball operations. I, I believe think, so. Daryl yeah. Morey. 
he he can really make a lot of the choices. He already clearly does because, like I called them last week, they are the Houston 76ers uh, at this point. Like you know, Philadelphia Philadelphia Rockets in full effect. Um, I do you think that Embiid could be traded, Bernie? Do you think they would do it? Um, I don't think they would. I think it would be one of those things where I think he's so beloved in Philadelphia that I don't think yeah. Yeah, I don't think it would necessarily get traded, but what I could see potentially is, you know, him being leaving in free agency and saying, you know, I gave it all my my all in Philly, but we don't have a competent roster to contend for a championship, so I got to move on. So yeah. I could see him leaving via free agency rather than by trade. I could see that too, but let's just speculate just in case. Let's just talk about where we would where we would see Embiid the most, or where what we would like to see the most for Embiid. Because I'll tell you right off, Rip Bernie. Again, I know I already said your team for a different one, but Celtics with Embiid and Tatum. Come on, I mean that is that's something. I I don't know if they have anywhere near enough to go get him if he was even available. It would have to probably be Jalen Brown, which at that point I would start questioning, is it even worth it? Are we giving up too much now to go get, do we, you know, do we cripple ourselves just to make a swap basically? Or do we, are we improving enough to justify doing this? Right. I do think he would fit super well in Boston. If you, you know, had some package of Robert Williams and stuff and, you know, that's talk about you're a serious contender for the next five years. If you could go get, and beat of all people and i think he could play in boston too like that's something to consider i think with anybody going to boston are they going to fit in that city and be able to you know find their way into being a, a beloved member of that organization and i honestly think he could i think he's got like the toughness and the grit he made it in philly i mean philly loves him but again that's why i think he they just can't trade him i think philly philly fans would riot if they sent Embiid <laughs> yeah. somewhere what about sending him to the uh I don't even know where you can send them. I mean, you can send them. To the what about Lakers, what about Phoenix? Phoenix, Phoenix would be an interesting one. I mean, you you have a disgruntled. Uh, I mean, even though they're eight and three right now, they're kind of balling. But you know, mm-hmm. I don't I don't think at this current point that uh, Aiton is really playing the way that he should or has been these last couple of days, these kind of last couple of years. I mean, fourteen points this year. Yeah, definitely he's not the Aiton that I was ranting and raving about two seasons ago. He's not that guy right now. But I, again, I mean, there's if you have an argument and refuse to go in in the in the what was it the the Western Conference Finals or the semi the semifinals, not the semi the the quarterfinals. It's that it was that against Dallas. You know, if you have a freak out and don't want to go back out on the court and have this big argument with your coach and then don't talk to him for four months. Probably that's why I, I shaded them so much coming into the season. I was wrong because Booker has outperformed, but um, yeah, I I think they're a legit a legit team because I mean they they were the only ones that made any any actual moves to try and get to KD. Um, and I I don't know if I think Embiid is probably even harder to get yeah. than KD is, so I don't think they can do it. But they would be an interesting team. It'd be a very interesting team. And I would question if they would actually like could they send enough back to Philly where Philly feels like hey, we're actually a little bit better now, but I, I just don't think they have enough to do that. So I don't think Philly would ever do it. Because Philly, the one thing with Philly, they would never trade Embiid for anything that's speculative. Like yeah. no picks, no young players. We want guys who make us win now. Yeah. So that's that's why I, I think he's the that. hardest, hardest of these guys to trade so far. I agree. I definitely agree with um, that. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. I, I, we got all the players I wanted to talk about as far as big trades because one of one, one to two of those guys that we just discussed, I think will get traded this season. Wow, you think um, so? If, I, I do think so. And if I had to rank them, I think Carl Anthony Towns is number one. Wow. Most likely. I think I genuinely think he gets traded this season. I think they they cannot have a season where they're not in the playoffs after sending all that for Rudy Gobert. They can't do it. It it might still happen, but they can't just let it happen without trying yeah. something. So I, I do think there is a, a realm of possibility where he I, I think it's gonna happen. I think SGA is certainly on the table, but I would actually put uh 
put AD at number two because I just don't see what else the yeah. Lakers can do to set themselves up for next season. Because really, that's going to be the moment that the Lakers hit where things start to change dramatically. And I'm not trying to get into the Lakers, but they are going to hit a point of no return where now we need to worry about, like, are we going to be even worse next season? Yeah. And they can't do that. So AD being moved, I would put that number two. And I, I do think, again, I think two of those guys get moved between SGA, AD, and Cat, and then somebody else. Maybe Bam. I thought about Bam. We didn't talk about him, but he could get moved at some point too. Yeah. The uh, you know, let us know in the comment section down below what do you guys make of these trade scenarios. Do you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? Uh, let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below.